Hi, this is Pat Donahue here at Dream Guitars today in uh, North Carolina. Having a great time playing some beautiful guitars. Trouble in mind, I'm blue. But I won't be blue always. Because the sun is gonna shine in my back door soon. The 219 come and pacify my mind. Yes, I'm going down to the river. I'm gonna take my rocking chair. Ah, oh, these blues don't quit me. I'm gonna rock on the way. in mind I'm blue but I won't be blue always because the sun's gonna shine in my back door yes the sun is gonna shine in my back door yeah the sun is gonna shine in my back door someday Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about uh, playing a song like that, how I approach it anyway. And um, a lot of what I think about in, when I'm playing and creating movement for the, my hands is just different moves. And some, if you know these, um, that's good. If you don't know them, I'd like to show you some, some real essential left hand moves. And the first one, in the key of E anyway, which I was just in, is this one right here. And I guess the first thing I'd say is I'm using these three fingers on the sixth, fourth, and third strings. And then, uh, if you keep their fingers on the same strings, this is the move. Which, is fortunately, also works in the reverse. You can think of it as simply as how dry I am. But, it's a move that allows you to play all kinds of little uh, improvisational moves. Uh, and I'll just stay in the key of E without even changing chords for a minute. chord for instance and uh, another thing while I'm talking about it is that's very movable if you keep your fingers on the same set of strings and take this E chord up to say G you're playing a G chord you can move that just pretend there's a capo at the third fret and try and find these same little shapes sorry in relation to the G chord which are Of course, that any root on the sixth string, you can do that with that chord A. So, if you have that uh, that you can do from just about any chord, and you play Trouble in Mind, for instance, you would play Trouble in Mind. I'm blue. There's the same thing on the B chord, the five chord, and the second chord of the song. But I won't be blue. Always there's A because the sun is going to shine in and be my back door someday. Turn around. <laughs> you just do it backwards, it's a great little turnaround too. So if you use that little trick a lot, that move, uh, you might uh, say on a D chord up here, you just don't have enough room to go. So what you have to do is uh, something uh, that I call, or everybody calls, string transference. Has to take this whole set of notes and switch it over to a next set of strings. So this, if you wanted to start it with the root of the chord A on the fifth string open, 
then you would have the same move would look different because it's on a different set of strings and the guitar is tuned the way it is. But it would be like this, uh, using an A like this as a starting place. I'm just playing now the uh, fifth, yeah, it's the fifth string, the third string, and the second string, uh, which is pretty much just moved over one string, each finger. But now it's going to look different. I'm going to start with A chord. The second chord in this, which is E seventh, is played like this. Now I don't move my finger out of the way or anything, I just play a regular E seventh. But these are the notes that you're playing with your right hand. And you move that same shape up one fret. You have C diminished. And if you leave your index finger where it is, and spread the other two fingers to the fourth and the fifth frets, you will have this move now. Which is also movable. If you wanted to play a D with this in it, now instead of up here, we could be here. Using this sort of A-shaped D as a starting point. Which makes things a lot easier if you're playing trouble in mind, because now you don't have to go so far up the neck to reach these. And it goes like this now. Trouble in mind, I'm blue, here's B. But I won't be blue always, A. Cause the sun is gonna shine and be my backyard, my back door someday. And once you've got a, a way to do it from roots on both the sixth and the fifth string, you can do that any place. There are certain little tricks in soloing those kind of moves too, and uh, each key uh, has its own. Uh, special things that uh, allow you to do special licks in it. But the key of E, uh, I make use of the open E and the B strings a lot, uh, even if I'm playing up the neck, because they usually belong to the key of uh, being the fifth and the, the root of E. So if you're playing uh, an E up here, for instance, a little triad, both the open E and the open B will sound great if you just take your fingers off. You know? So you can come up with a little rolls and stuff using open strings, which is kind of cool. But the thing I was going to talk about that's very blues related to that is there's a little kind of system of notes here. You would normally go here to finish that phrase. But since it's an E, I'm using the open E a lot there and going. Because then it gives me time to move my left hand down here to do the rest of my E stuff. Whatever that might be. So it's a way of extending a lick from all the way up here very seamlessly by just inserting that E on the open E string. That way your hand gets time to get down here to this other familiar stuff. So the way I was using it in trouble in mind would be something like this. Right here now. And that open E string right there allows my hand to get down here. It doesn't sound like I'm doing any work, which is the best way to play it, believe me. So here's a little trick I came across for soloing over any in any spot, really, and uh, with any chord shape. And I'm going to take this real easy sort of F shape here and take it, you know, move it around the neck. And let's just end up at A because there's a nice open A string in the bass. And a lot of people play stuff in A blues. And that is up, up, up. Anyway, there's a cool thing you can do if you just pay attention to each of those notes where they are and treat them as entities that you can do something with. And here's what you do with them. They take the first note here and do a double pull off down two frets. And you do that with every note in this shape. You can go all the way across the fingerboard. And it, what you end up with is a nice little triplet uh, lick in the key of, of uh, A7. And it's just as easy as pie because you just have to know where these are and and then figure out how a way to put it into your lick. And of course, it's not only totally movable, for instance, here's G, same shape, but it works with any inversion of the triad. So here's the G triad up here. If you just take each of those notes and move them, do the same thing with them, you have another great sounding lick in the same key. And up here, that's another G, it's getting up there, but the same concept applies. You use that visual shape and, and treat each of those notes like a little double pull-off. And uh, it comes out like this. Trouble in mind. I'm blue. 
I won't be blue always. And that's uh, doing it over B and A in those shapes. So, have fun with that one.